Hello everyone, MP Hater here. Welcome back to my beginner's guide to Sekiro Shadows Die Twice. This is part five. So, in the last episode, we ended up making our way through the uh, next chunk of the Harada Estate, and we're about to kind of hit the last couple of sections, basically leading into the boss of the Harada Estate. So, uh, from here, we're going to go ahead and have a look at our skills real quick. So, kind of the goal that we're going to be going towards at this point is I'm going to complete the Ashina Arts minus the Ashina Cross. It's not a very useful technique for the uh, for the game. Uh, looks flashy, looks cool, but um, it's not really all that good. Though it is something that we will eventually have to obtain to get some of the things that are good because this does branch off to something else a little later. So the next thing I'm going to be getting is going to be flowing water. Then we're going to be heading back over to Shinobi Arts because there's quite a few things that we want here. Uh, we're going to want to get the Breath of Light, uh, Life Light. We're going to want to start increasing our spirit emblems as well so we can use our prosthetics more often. And then we're also going to want to be, uh, get Shinobi Eyes. Um, so... That's going to increase the damage inflicted to posture whenever we uh, do Mercury counters. We're going to run into a lot of enemies going forward that have uh, thrust abilities, so uh, that's going to be something important going forward as well. So I'm going to basically get Flowing Water uh, next, which will reduce the at amount of attack damage to posture whenever we're attacked by an enemy with a sword. Uh, and then I'm going to end up purchasing Suppress Presence. I'm going to then purchase Shinobi Eyes. It's going to be kind of the direction that we go to uh, kind of immediately from here. With that, though, we don't yet have the uh, ability to, to buy all of that yet, so we're going to finish up this area. So we're going to head around the corner. So what I like to do with this section here is there's a lot of enemies here. There's also enemies inside the building. I'm going to use a Goshen Sugar. This allows us to be quiet and not be seen as easily. And these two enemies that are walking away here, I'm going to prioritize killing them first. Kind of trying to get them out of view of the guys on the left. So... Kill these guys quick, try to be quiet about it so that we don't incur the wrath of these guys. I'm going to kill this guy. I'm going to kill that guy next. And now we've cleared out the enemies outside. I'm going to head inside. Come in here, grab a dowsing powder, and there's an enemy right behind this. So, go ahead and kill him. That'll usually incur the wrath of an enemy down there. Got a divine confetti to get. And that's going to be it. So. Now that we're outside here, we're going to head through the water. And you'll notice that there's a guy who's kind of waiting right there. We're going to actually talk to him after we get a death blow off of the mini boss. We're going to clean up all of the enemies that are here. Um, I tend to like to pick them off one at a time. Uh, there's a couple different ways that you can do this, but uh, 
Uh, I find it easiest to uh, kind of circle around the back, so we're going to go along the left-hand side here. Pop over here, kill this guy first. So we're going to need the Shinobi prosthetics for this next part. The spring-loaded firecrackers would be good to have if you want to boost your attack power. You can use the Akko Sugar. We probably won't need it, though. And we are going to be using the Ichimanji against this, uh, this mini-boss. So I'm going to go ahead and head down here. Try to be quiet about this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to kill this guy first in stealth. That's going to alert the others. I'm going to run to the uh, guy over there, kill him. I'm going to kill the guy next to him. And then there's another guy with a bow and arrow over there. I'm going to try to kill him next. And then by the time I kill them, the two guys that are on the left here will usually have uh, tried to catch up to me. So um, that's kind of my goal here. So let's go after this guy first. Run. Get this guy. This guy. Again, you're invulnerable whenever you are doing death blows, so knock him out. And then we're just going to back off. So best thing to do is going to be to hide, wait for him to become de-aggroed. And then we're going to follow him and do a death blow against him. So as you can see, he's starting to walk back to the center of the arena. He'll turn around and we can get him from behind. Afterwards, when I go talk to that guy who has been kind of watching our fight, and he's going to help us with this. So talk to him quickly before the other guy gets here. So use this opportunity to nail him with the Ichimanji. Whenever he does that attack, make sure to back off. Oh, he's ready for his final death blow. And he's dead. You'll get a prayer bead for your troubles. This guy won't be talking to you, though. And then we're going to head inside here. Kind of sneak because we do have a couple of enemies here. Head left first, we're going to grab some dowsing powder. Over here for a pellet. And then we're going to go ahead and try to kill one of these guys. Oh, I could have come a Kiri countered that. Oh well. Come over here, grab that. Another oil. And then anytime you see one of these plates against the wall, it allows you to go to the other side. 
Got Mibu Balloon of Wealth, a light coin purse. Divine Confetti. This is not, by the way, one of these things. And then we also have, if you cut this open, we have another prayer bead. Now you can also push your way through all of these kind of places. These are all breakable. Otherwise, we're going to go ahead and head back. So through this one, here is the old woman who gave you the bell earlier. Got a sculptor's idol. Oh, I forgot about this item. Mibu Balloon of Soul. I don't think there's anything else in here. Oh, okay. So now we're gonna head towards the boss. So this is the guy that we met, his mother as well. And he's gonna give you snap seeds. Now, I do have three. Looks like I can go ahead and Require some skills. We're gonna go and grab the flowing water. This will help us a lot. Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about this boss. Uh, we're going to want to have. You can again use Akko Sugar if you want to. I'm not going to be using it for this fight though. But uh, we can uh, go ahead and use Snap Seeds. Uh, snap Seeds are going to be useful because they can dispel illusions. Um, you'll get to see those in the second um, phase of this fight. As far as our prosthetics are concerned, you're pretty much just going to want a shuriken. Doesn't have to be the uh, spinning shuriken, though the spinning shuriken can be more beneficial um, in some situations because you do have the ability to uh, hit the enemy multiple times. And if you're, your timing is not great, uh, the, the multiple time hit will end up being beneficial to knock this enemy away. So this enemy is very mobile, very agile. Um, she is going to end up um, jumping around a lot. Uh, she also ends up uh, kind of running wires uh, uh, between like pillars and poles and walls and climbing on those, basically kind of standing on them and uh, throwing things at you like uh, uh, shurikens at you. And she'll often also use the, uh, the wires as a kind of a leaping off point to do several different attacks. There's a perilous attack that she'll do off of one. Uh, there's also a um, kind of a kicking uh, drop kick attack that she'll do with it. And uh, whenever she is kind of leaping off of it or leaping onto it, you want to peg her with a uh, spinning shuriken if you can, and that will knock her out. And the thing about this fight is this this fight is definitely a uh, apostrophe fight. So we want to make sure that we knock her out of the sky for that. Now, as far as what to do with her whenever she's on the ground, um, there's a couple of different options. There's kind of the cheese option, basically hit her once and then circle around her, hit her again, circle around her. Uh, the way that her AI works basically means that uh, she will in most cases not block that and you can pretty much uh, beat the whole boss with that. However, the way that I usually am gonna do it is I'm gonna swing at her two to three times um, and I say two to three because a lot of times she will end up uh, deflecting. So uh, she'll block probably uh, either one or two of the attacks. And then the third one, uh, she'll actually end up deflecting. And you'll know that she's deflected it because you'll see an orange flash in front of you. Once she does that, you're going to need to uh, deflect her next attack, which is going to be a kick. Uh, if you can deflect her kick, uh, she'll actually do one of three things. She will either continue allowing you to hit her with the sword. So uh, hit her two to three times again and then rinse repeat. And that will build up her posture meter very quickly. Um, sometimes though, she will end up doing a perilous attack. 
which uh, it's a sweeping attack where her arms will basically cross out in front of her, um, and she'll be basically like a swiping attack with both of her arms, and uh, it does a lot of damage. You can uh, jump on her head during that, though. That will also end up doing a lot of posture damage against this fight. And then the final uh, thing that she might do, uh, if, if you can't lock her into that particular um, uh, attack, attack, kick uh, thing, is she'll jump out and uh, she'll often either throw some uh, shurikens at you or she'll do a drop kick against you. Uh, in which case you can uh, uh, throw another shuriken at her in order to knock her out of the sky. So that's going to be kind of the gist up behind this. Um, she also has a second phase. We'll talk about the second phase once we get to the second phase. But the only real difference with it is she uses illusions. And the illusions you can either just run away from them or use the snap seed for talk more about it when we get to that point though all right so attacker there is her you can kind of see what's happening here there she decided to jump away and then we're gonna rinse her peat So try to avoid getting hit by that. That does a lot of damage. There's the attack that you can... Uh, and I did not time that well. There's one of them that you can knock her out of the sky with. And there is the attack that I have the most trouble with responding with. So we got our first form down. So she's going to teleport up there. As she drops down, I'm going to try to hit her with an Ichimanji. So if you can manage to get her into the loop, you can actually avoid her summoning any of these things. Now there are two choices here. You can either simply run from them or you can use your snap seeds. The important part though is when she does that, we want to get behind a pillar and block. Some of them may get past the pillar. A lot of her attacks will now utilize those things, so you want to try to nail her quickly. So as you can see, that now uses... We knocked her out of the sky. She's dead. So we're going to get a memory as well as a Sakura droplet. Uh, we'll have to provide this to Kuro later and it will give us... Um, Increase, increased resurrective power. So, eventually there's going to be a cutscene, and then you're going to die.
Which is how you originally died. Uh, it's it's why you were resurrected to begin with. Anyway, so we're going to go ahead and head over here. Acquire some skills. Again, uh, we're going to wait to get the Ichimanji double for a little later. But we're going to start trying to move towards getting Breath of Life light. As well as trying to get um, Shinobi eyes. So that's going to be beneficial to have as well. So in this case, I'm going to go ahead and grab Shinobi Karma's, Karma, uh, Shinobi's Karma body. And then I'm going to grab Breath of Light after that. So it's going to take a while for us to get enough to be able to get that. So probably won't get that until we either reach Kenichiro or beat Kenichiro, I suspect. However, before we do anything else, uh, let's go ahead and head out to the Ashina outskirts. Back to the... Uh, we'll do the gate path. And we're going to go ahead and go talk to the old lady and Irinosuke, her son, to wrap out that particular quest line. Again, just doing kind of the same thing that I usually do with this particular section. I don't want to be chased by enemies while I'm out here, so... Now we're free to head down here without worrying about being attacked by anything. So, as you can see, the mother has passed. And he's about to pass too. So, if you've already been inflicted by Dragon Rot, by the way, you will need to cure Dragon Rot using one of the... I don't think I have any yet. No, I don't. So you'll have to use an item we'll talk about later uh, in order to cure Dragon Rot. Don't worry too much about it if uh, if if you've got Dragon Rot, by the way, at this point. The uh, Dragon Rot uh, basically stops you from pro progressing some characters' storylines if they are infected with it, but you can pretty easily cure it. I recommend only curing it, though, when you actually need to progress a storyline because it's going to happen multiple times throughout your playthrough. So don't worry too much about it if you... Happen to have Dragon Rot and can't talk to them yet. Anyway, uh, we're going to go ahead and head back. Which I guess I can just use. Idle. And we're going to head towards the Ashina Castle now. We're going to go ahead and start completing some of the other side content that's inside there so that we can get uh, what we really want to have at this point is we want to have um, more uh, gourds, uh, preferably one more. We can get one more inside the castle uh, before we reach Kenichiro. And then uh, we also want to get some additional uh, skills if we can get them, so some additional levels. So that's going to be helpful for us as well. So, and some prayer beads. I'd like to get us one more prayer bead necklace before we fight uh, Genichiro. So, with that, let's go ahead and travel over to Ashina Castle. And actually, we need to go to the res reservoir because we're going to go fight the ninja next. We're going to go get a another prayer bead real quick. That way we can waste the money without worrying about dying to this fight, because this fight's not an easy fight. So we're going to come over here now, and we're going to kill these two guards again. Alright, so up here we've got a Taro troop member who is in some ill-equipped armor, so I'm going to recommend the Loaded Spear for this. I also like the Shurikens for this, so we're going to use the Shurikens to kill all of the dogs. Mm. 
Then we're going to switch to the Lotus Spear for the actual fight. Now, if you want to, you can death blow him. Yeah, he's not very bright, but in this case, I want you to see how to fight him. So, wait for him to stop swinging for a moment, and then hit him with, with that, and that will make him a lot easier to deal with. So you can block that. Eventually he'll get angry. This is actually going to be the best moment to kill him. Because he won't turn around once you uh, get behind him, once he starts his final set of attacks. So... So we got some scrap magnetite, which is going to be upgrade materials. Over here, grab a black gunpowder, more upgrade materials. Over here, we've got a heavy coin purse. So we've got another sculptor's idol here. And another memorial mob. So this guy sells a prayer bead. Let's go ahead and buy that. And then he also sells, looks like a few other things. I'll go ahead and spend the rest of my money just in case I happen to die. By the way, if you have um, dragon rot in the world, you can cure it with dragon's blood droplets. You do have to talk to Emma and then go find someone who has been afflicted with dragon rot, collect their blood and give it to her and she will give you another dragon's blood droplet, but you can use these to cure dragon rot. I will definitely encounter dragon rot in this game because I'm not that good of a gamer, but I'll call it out whenever we actually encounter dragon's rot uh, in this uh, in this stuff, but it's pretty easy. Um, just talk to Emma after it happens and uh, she'll kind of direct you where to go from there, but basically someone else in the game will have dragon rot and you can go to your key items. Where are you? And you'll have actually an item that uh, points out who is infected with it. So go talk to them and get their blood and then bring it back to Emma, who will give you the cure for it. All right. So now that we have done that, we're going to go ahead and head back over to the reservoir. And with that, I think that's going to wrap out this episode, everybody. So in the next episode, we're going to go tackle uh, this ninja who's over in the reservoir area. And then we're also going to head towards Genichiro, uh, deal with a mini-boss on the way. And then we're also going to uh, fight Genichiro himself, which I think is probably where we're going to end off the next episode. But until then, thank you everybody for watching. Please like, subscribe, and comment. And as always, I'll see you in the next one. Later.